There is no line item veto in the line item veto bill. It's a recommendation to the president, or to, yes, it's a recommendation from the president to the Congress. He can recommend now until the cows come home, right? The bill did nothing. It was all posturing. Make members of Congress look good and don't do anything worthwhile. Congress needs to come out of those posturing shadows and assert itself, and that includes taking control of the EPA. How do you do that? Defunded. Defunded, exactly. No funding can take place in Congress in Washington without the House saying, okay, absolutely. Once it's credit, I mean, what's the rules credit? Just ignore the rules then, or what? Well, Congress, uh, the, the way Congress has to do it, regardless who the president is, okay, you want to have an EPA? We aren't sure we even like the EPA. Well, I mean, <laughs> once the law is out, I don't, you, know, you never hear of a law being taken back. That, that's what, this is one of the corners we have to turn, exactly. This is one of the corners we have to turn, and the only way it's going to be turned, I'm convinced, is with a Congress that steps out of the shadows. Okay, Mr. President, whoever it is, you want to fund the EPA? Here's what, here's what you're going to change. You don't want to change that? Okay, we don't need the EPA. I did Congress, Congress by controlling the purse strings, the House by controlling the purse strings, uh, can, if it's courageous, run the show. Is it courageous now? It is not. Is it hopeless? God willing, it's not. <laughs> you think it is? Pertinent. Pertinent. Okay. I won't. My blood's boiling. I'm telling you. I'm mad. I do. I'm, I'm you checking be. my pulse here. You my should heart's pounding. Should be. <laughs> just don't be mad at me. I mean, I'm just the well, messenger. <laughs> I'm just. I mean, what I'm telling you is what I think we have to do. And I think Congress needs to step out of the shadows. I think that's true in every area. <laughs> Of government. Congress needs to step out of the shadows, including the Supreme Court. The Constitution gives the Congress the authority to limit the scope of power of the Supreme Court. And Congress needs to do it. And this court has to know that if it steps out of line, and it has, Congress is going to say, okay, you no longer have that authority. Whether it's the Kelo decision on land rights, whether it's family issues, I don't care. If Congress steps out of the shadows and asserts itself, uh, it can make it can make the difference. Yes, ma'am. Can anything be done about the enormous number of executive orders that are president has signed this year? Okay, everybody hear the question. Can anything be done about the enormous? Uh, number, and not just the number, but the significance of the executive orders the President has been signed. What the Constitution says is that both houses of Congress can overturn an executive order. Both houses. What if you only have one? Then you say to the President, well, we just aren't going to fund, <laughs> we just aren't going to fund certain things. Uh, so again, a top Congress can overturn anything it wants to, but you have to have a courageous Congress that steps out of the shadows, lives up to its constitutional uh, uh, responsibility. What does the Constitution say? It says that the Congress is the legislative lawmaking body of government. Why in heaven's name does the Congress let the President make the law? by executive order and sit back and hide in the bushes and say, oh, naughty, naughty. I mean, this is not the way freedom works. <laughs> okay? And this is not difficult. But we need some new blood of some people that are willing to challenge the powers that be, and I'm talking about both parties, uh, that are willing to make these kinds of changes. Now, I'm going to suggest a couple more questions and then uh, the uh, pumpkin is going to, <laughs> carriage is going to turn it into a pumpkin. Way in the back, yes sir. Would term limits do that? In hell, I think term limits is a good thing. I, I fully support them, but don't hold your breath. I mean, I think it's going to be tough to accomplish and you have to be, you know, politics is the art of the possible, great idea, uh, but not easy. Yeah. I think along the same lines, you know, Congress needs to be bound by the same laws that puts on everybody else. You know Congress is exempted from Obamacare. Yeah. 
Okay. You know Congress is exempted from Social Security and Medicare. You want to save Social Security, put Congress on it. <laughs> I can assure you it will be doing a lot better. You want to have good medical care, put Congress on the same medical care as everybody else. I assure you it's going to get a lot better. So the aristocrats have to join the commoners. And, uh, and again, I, I know you know where I'm coming from. I mean, I'm a commoner from the word go. So, I guess one or two more questions and then uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, we'll uh, break. Yes, sir? Mine's not a question. Mine's just a state. Okay. Let's go along with this guy that's sitting right here next to me. Get on the wall. Mm -hmm. I fed out and put out the gear. Good. And I'm telling him, you know, it's hell out of my house. Good. It's my house. Good. It's your house. Good. It's not their house. They're Good. representing you. Right. Right. But let me just echo that a little bit. I, I'm sympathetic with the Catholic Church and what it said about you know contraception and abortifacients and all of that. They're right. Their religious freedoms are being violated. But what I say is, since when does the federal government have the authority or the right to tell anybody what kind of insurance they have to buy? Or any business, what kind of insurance it has to offer? or what kind of coverage we have to have, or whether we have to have coverage at all. They have no right, okay? The Constitution was formed to protect our liberty. And we need to use it for that purpose. It's not there to make government our master or our nanny. It's there for liberty. And uh, that's I want that's the bottom line. Yes, sir. Can you explain the uh, House Bill 4646? What wants to tax all bank transactions? You know, I know it's there, but I don't really know much about it. Now, this is number two. First, Gary got me in the question. I really couldn't get the details up. Can, you might know more about that than I do. And it came across the internet the other day. Okay. Any time you put money in the bank, okay. you get one percent. Take the money out, they get another one. Whose proposal is it? Yeah. You know, like, just keep in mind the UN has proposals similar to that. You know, I mean, lower percentages, but look out. I mean, they want to put taxes on all financial transactions, and uh, that's the last place we want that uh, we want to go. Mike. Mm -hmm. Two things that I haven't, and we were a few minutes late, I apologize. Um, Two things that I haven't heard addressed is, one is the UN Small Arms Treaty, which of mm -hmm. course isn't. Yes. And the second thing is Obama has just, uh, I don't know if it's proposed or it's already gone into effect, shutting down eight or nine uh, border patrol stations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you talk about both those issues? Sure, sure. Uh, two questions. One is about Obama shutting down border, border uh, patrol stations, and as we know, there are quite a number of them now that are closed. I don't know the number, but there are a lot of them. Uh, that are close. And the other is the, uh, the the treaty that the UN is working on right now, I think is the one you're asking about. Because right now the UN is working on a treaty that it calls arms control or something like that. Well, Hillary's been trying to get yeah. us to sign this so-called arms control treaty. <laughs> right. What's so significant about it, yes. other than the fact that it's confiscation of all Americans' guns, right. is that uh, it, it takes away when we signed this treaty, uh -huh. as I understand it under our Constitution, mm -hmm. we cannot go against that treaty. We yeah. cannot yeah. fight that treaty. It's yeah. a done deal. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the, the treaty that uh, Mike is talking about is being worked on right now in the UN, and uh, many feel, and I think they're probably justified, that its intention is to eliminate the right to bear arms in all countries, including the United States. And my history or my experience with the UN suggests to me that's probably what it's all about. So that treaty will have a bearing on us only if it is ratified by the US Senate. And it takes a two-thirds vote to ratify. So don't elect senators <laughs> who would vote for a treaty that puts our Second Amendment rights under the control of the UN. Uh, so. Uh, and then what was the border. other question? Pardon? Border patrol. Let me be explicit on border patrol. Uh, we've got good laws. They're not enforced. 
Why aren't they enforced? It's because there's not the political will and the leadership in either party. Okay? And so we have to elect people who insist that the laws be enforced. And I want you to know that's where I'm coming from. Now, uh, they have to be enforced. Yeah, there you go. This is, it's just bizarre, you know, the federal government won't, uh, won't enforce the law, and then when a state tries to, the Obama administration brings suit saying, oh no, you can't do that, you don't have the right to. And all Arizona is trying to do is getting the federal government to, to enforce it. But you need to elect people who are willing to buck the leadership uh, in, the, in both parties uh, on this. But we've got good laws, they need to be enforced. Neil. One unfortunate thing in the uh, political world is that, uh, or in the world in general, is that people's memories are real short. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They don't remember what Obama did when he first got in office and what Walls went along with. Cash yeah. clunkers, the GM bailout. Right. And just last week, GM was the number one car seller in the, in the nation. But does, did they read the fine print to find out why? The reason was is that 70, that uh, the United States bought 76 percent more cars that month than they did the previous I month. I see. I didn't. I was not aware of that. Uh, by the way, we own about a third of GM. Uh, in terms of again the question, where can we make cuts? We are currently 36 billion dollars in the red to General Motors. Okay, that's what we have lost. That's what you and I, the taxpayers, have lost. About two-thirds of that was a direct subsidy, which we're never going to get back. And about nine billion of that is in terms of stock that we own that is going down the toilet. <laughs> right. It was not a good stock investment. General Motors should have been allowed to declare bankruptcy, reorganize, become lean and mean like Northwest Airlines did, and, be, and become genuinely competitive in the world marketplace. I mean, this is just a no-brainer, isn't it, folks? So, uh, I want you to know I'm opposed to corporate welfare. That's